Hi, and welcome to the video about the consolidated statement of cash flows. Before we start, I tell you a secret, or maybe not so secret. Many groups present their consolidated statement of cash flows incorrectly. They just do it plain wrong. Why? And how to do it right? You're just about to find out. I'm Sylvia of IFRS Box, and I help people understand and simplify IFRS. I have created the IFRS kit where I teach people many IFRS topics in a clear, highly practical and entertaining way. And also lots of free materials are available on my web ifrsbox.com. So how do the most companies prepare their consolidated statement of cash flows? Normally, you take the consolidated balance sheet or the statement of financial position, that's FB letters, profit or loss and other statements. And then you calculate year to year changes in the assets, liabilities and equity items. So you take closing balance, less opening balance and you have a change. Then you put or classify these changes into the statement of cash flows. You make some non-cash adjustments like depreciation. Then you eliminate intra-group cash flows and transactions and you're done. Nice and easy method. And I must say that in the exams, this method is usually examined. Now, this method is okay, but only when no foreign currency is involved. In other words, parent and subsidiary use the same functional currency. So if you operate in the UK and you have a subsidiary in the UK, then use this method and you'll be just fine. This method is not okay when a parent and subsidiary use different functional currencies. For example, parent in the UK using British pounds and subsidiary in Germany using euros. Why is this method wrong in this case? It is not in line with the standard IS7 statement of cash flows. Why? Well, because when you are preparing the step two and calculate the changes in balance sheet items, you are effectively applying the closing rates because subsidiary's financial position was translated with closing rates. However, IS7 prescribes using transaction date rates for your cash flows or average rates. If you use the wrong rates, then also your numbers are wrong and it becomes evident when there's a high increase or decrease in foreign exchange rates over time. So how to do it instead? What's the right way? Okay, let me show you on a short example. So here it is. Hello, the UK company has owned 100% in Gutentag, a German subsidiary since January 2015. The following transactions occurred in 2016. On 31st October 2016, Gutentag paid dividend of 1000 euros to Hello. On 30th November 2016, Hello purchased goods from Gutentag for 5000 euros with cost of 4500, that's cost of Gutentag. The goods remained unsold at year end and the payable was unpaid. The applicable rates and financial statements are below. Prepare the consolidated statement of cash flows for the year ended 31st December 2016. How shall we start? The step number one is to prepare the individual statements of cash flows for both parent and subsidiary and ideally use the same line items. Well, I have prepared them for you. I'm not going to teach you in this video how to do that because I published an article with video about the detailed method on ifrsbox.com. So please check that out. We have a nice clean individual statements of cash flows here. Hello in British pounds and Guten Tag in euros. So both in their own currencies. Step number two. We need to translate subsidiary statement of cash flows to the presentation currency. And in this case, we assume it's going to be the parent's currency. So we translate euros cash flows to British pounds. What rates do we use? Where possible, we use the transaction date rates. Otherwise, average period rates. We can use the transaction date rate for dividends paid by Gutentag to Hello. That was on 31st October. So we use 0 0.9005. Then other items are translated with average rate in 2016, 0 0.8188. By the way, these are the real rates.
And what about profit before tax? Here, be careful, and I recommend not applying any rate in the statement of cash flows, but I recommend taking this number from the Gutentax individual profit or loss statement translated to British pounds. The reason is that in that profit or loss statement in British pounds, there are Gutentax numbers translated with different rates, not just with one rate. So we need to translate profit or loss too. Let's see. We can translate intragroup sales of 5,000 euros with the rate on 30th November. That's when the sale was made. And remaining items with the average rate. Then Gutentag's profit for the year is just calculated from British pounds numbers and it is transferred or brought to the statement of cash flows. So no rate is applied in the statement of cash flows. It is taken from individual statement of profit or loss translated to British pounds. Back to the cash flows. Opening and closing balances of cash are translated with the closing rates of 2015 and 2016 because these are not cash movements, cash receipts or cash payments. These are the balances at the year end and must come from the balance sheet. Now, there's a checksum. It checks whether your numbers are correct and it should be zero. Here it's not zero because we applied different foreign exchange rates to different items and it's quite huge. It's 2528. This is the effect of exchange rate changes on cash. And if you are preparing your cash flows with the common method from the consolidated balance sheet, this would be wrong. Why is it so high here? Well, look at the exchange rates. They are real rates, as I mentioned. At the end of 2015, it was 0 0.734 British pounds for one euro. At the end of 2016, it was 0 0.8562 British pounds for one euro. So British pound weakened in 2016. And most of this foreign exchange effect represents the effect on cash balances. Now, it's possible to prove this number and it's not the same as currency translation difference in balance sheet. But we will not do it in this video. The step number three is to aggregate parents and subsidiaries cash flows. Easy, you just add up Hello's line items and Good and Dark's line items in British pounds. Step number four is to eliminate intragroup transactions and this is the most demanding step that takes a lot of work, but well, we have to do it. And you need to be careful with rates at which you eliminate. Think about what rate was applied to include the item in the financial statements and eliminate with the same rate. Well, let's see. Here we have three things to eliminate. The first one is dividend paid by Guten Tag to Hello. We will eliminate the dividends from the affected captions, which are profit before tax. Parents profit was increased by the dividends, so we must bring it down. We deduct. Then the adjustment for finance income and expenses net. The net expenses were added, but they were lowered by the dividends paid. So we must increase them again at the dividend back. The dividend received, no dividend was received by the group, so deduct. And dividend paid, no dividend was paid to the group, add back. The sum of these adjustments shall be zero. We use the same rate for all four entries because we assume that the parent recognized the dividend income using the transaction date rate and the dividend paid in subsidiary statement of cash flows was recalculated using the same rate. Then we eliminate Guten Tag's receivable with Hello's payable. If you make cash flows with the direct method, then this specific item is not necessary. But under indirect method, yes, you need to do it. So how do we eliminate? Subsidiary Guten Tag has receivable of 5,000 euro to the parent. And this affected the increase of trade receivables line. Without this intragroup receivable, the decrease would have been lower by 5,000 euro. So we add this amount back. What rate? 
Well, subsidiary's cash flow statements were translated using average rate. So we translate the elimination in the decrease with the average rate too. So we add back 5,000 times 0 0.8198, which is 4,094 British pounds. The parent hello had an intragroup payable of 5,000 euro. This affected the decrease in trade payables line. Without this intragroup payable, the decrease would have been higher by 5,000 euros. So we deduct this amount. What rate? Parent's cash flow statement was prepared from its balance sheet and the intragroup payable was translated by the closing rate there. So we deduct uh, 5,000 times 0 0.8562, that is 4,281 British pounds from the line decrease in trade payables. Now our check sum shows the difference of 187 British pounds. It's here because we apply different exchange rates and therefore you need to report this amount in the line effect of changes in foreign exchange. Finally, let's remove the unrealized profit on inventories and its impact on the consolidated cash flow statement. Subsidiary made profit of 500 euros. It's clear from the question. And inventories are still in the Hello's warehouse. So there is no profit for the group. How do we eliminate? Subsidiary Gutentag made profit of 500 euros and reported it in the line profit before tax. So we need to deduct 500 euros from that line. What rate? In subsidiary's profit, intragroup sale was translated using the actual transaction date rate. So we need to use the same rate when eliminating unrealized profit. By the way, AUP means adjustment for unrealized profit. We deduct 500 euros times 0 0.8525, that is 426 British pounds from the line profit before taxation. Then parents' inventories are overstated by the unrealized profit of 500 euros and it affected the line increase in inventories. Without this profit, the increase would have been lower and therefore we need to add it back. What rate? Well, UK parent recognized the inventories at the transaction date rate, historical rate. The inventories are non-monetary item and therefore they remain the same without recalculating them by closing rate at the year end. So we add the same 426 British pounds back to the line increase in inventories. Now the last thing, we add up the aggregated numbers and adjustments and voila, we are done. You have a nice, clean and correct statement of cash flows here. I know it's laborious process, but this is the right process. So if you'd like to get this Excel file or learn more about various IFRS topics, including consolidation, cash flows, new revenue standard, new lease standard, IFRS 9, whatever comes to your mind, please check my IFRS kit, the premium course, or just browse my web for many articles, videos, discussions and other materials. Bye and thanks for watching.